Washington Grown is brought to you by Treetop and the Washington Hospitality Association. Hi everyone, I'm Christy Gordson and welcome to Washington Grown. Dairy cows provide a nutritious gift that we can enjoy all day long in our cereal bowl in the morning as a key ingredient in ice cream or maybe with our favorite cookies at night. This episode is all about dairy. We'll head to the swanky Seattle restaurant Art of the Table where we'll cook up some delicious ricotta stuffed ravioli. Mmm, the ricotta in there is so tasty. And did you know that latte you drink in the morning is actually a great and nutritious start to your day? We'll chat with a nutritionist about all of the health benefits dairy provides. Here's to a healthy body with our lattes. You bet. Then we're heading to Grace Harbor Farms to see how yogurt is made. All this and more on Washington Grown. really is a family affair. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> oh, oh my look at gosh. that. Yeah. Today I'm in Seattle at Art of the Table. This neighborhood restaurant is known for its intimate, homey atmosphere and a 7 to 10 course tasting menu that changes daily. The presentation was beautiful, edible flowers. I was a cold soup, uh, which is always interesting to try, but it was delicious. We love the intimate uh, atmosphere here and the plates are always like a piece of art on the table. But I think also because of small size, it affords itself to be able to like really be attentive to each play and then like really change the menu every day. That's the kind of experience I really value, appreciate. I'm just more about the surprise when it comes out, so looking forward to it all. The dessert probably. Who yeah. wouldn't, right? <laughs> I sat down with owner and chef Dustin Ronsby's and asked how he develops a different menu every night. The ingredients drive the menu. I don't come up with a menu and then try to go source all these ingredients out. I look at what we have and then kind of build a menu off of that. I want people to be excited to be here. I also want them to put away all of their like outside the door things. Um, we have kind of a, a little rules on the top of our menu uh, to put away your phone, to enjoy yourselves, to try everything. It's great when somebody walks in and they read that for yeah. the first time and, and then they actually abide by it and it's like really fun. Later in the show, Chef Dustin is teaching me how to make ravioli stuffed with fresh house-made ricotta. We're looking for a mess. I'm just kidding. Joking. <laughs> well, you came you to the right little, place you go with little. me. <laughs> Heading south of Seattle to the Cranick Dairy. I'm here with Leanne Cranick, and we're in one of your fields surrounded by some of your lovely ladies. They are right? lovely ladies, aren't they? <laughs> we have about 2,600 animals all together. Wow. They're all spread out over a thousand acres here on the Enumclaw Plateau. Even though we have as many animals that we do and we have as much land that we do, it's still very much a family operation. My husband and I are out working with these girls every single day. Where does the milk go? A truck will come here every night and pick it up in his tanker. <laughs> we ship about 9,000 gallons a day and it'll go to a plant where it's pasteurized and then either bottled or made into some of the things that we enjoy like butter, ice cream, yogurt, cottage cheese and within 48 hours, it's at your local store. So we are headed to the parlor. So we are headed to the parlor. Now that sounds fancy. It is fancy. <laughs> <laughs> well, hi ladies. How's it going? We want this to be a very comfortable place for the cows. It's kind of like when you and I go to the spa, we want to relax. Washington dairies are very concerned about milk quality. We want that for our consumers, but we also you know, if you have low quality milk, that means your cows aren't doing very well either. And animal welfare is very important to us. All this milk starts with feed, and at Cranick Dairy, they feed their cows with their own special recipe with ingredients from some unexpected places. Because we're so close to Seattle, we take advantage of that. So we yeah, get spent grain not? from about 15 breweries and distilleries around Seattle. 
It smells a little bit like beer. It does kind of, yeah, it smells this, good. This is alfalfa we yeah. get from Eastern Washington. Very important to have the green leaves. What so is that? another thing we're blessed with in Puget Sound is lots of bakeries. This is, this is actually a, a cookie dough. This is our energy source. This is their fat source. So wow. we can feed this instead of corn. This is grass silage. And basically what grass silage is, is pickled grass. Pickled grass. Farmers use this because we need a, a feed source of forage for our cows year round. And this is one way of doing that. This, this is, is it. Stuff mixed together. This is everything mixed together. This so the recipe. Smell just about everything in there. When you want cows, you want them all laying down, chewing their cut. That uh -huh. means they're comfortable. Yeah. That's when cows make milk, is when they're comfortable like that. And when you have cows, milk isn't the only thing they're producing. All right, so what am I standing in? <laughs> we care a lot about the environment, yeah. so we don't want any of our manure to go into streams. We worked with a company called Dairy Tech up in Linden, Washington, and they invented a machine called a Bedding Master, which is an in vessel composter. It takes our manure, puts it in a hopper, and it's in the vessel, mm -hmm. turning for three days, about 160 degrees. That's enough to dry down the cow manure fiber mm -hmm. and sterilize it. So yes. everything here is reused and it, comes it, around. There's definitely a loop. We have a unique partnership with Elysian Brewery in Seattle. Well, they have a great pumpkin beer festival every October. Okay. So what a great thing to have a sustainable circle where we feed the spent grain to our cows. Our cows make scarecrow's pride right. that's used to grow giant pumpkins. And we take those giant pumpkins to their beer festival. Last year, we filled a 1,750 pound pumpkin with three kegs of beer and we tapped it. No 1,200 way! people. It was so much fun. And of course, once we were done with the pumpkin, we brought the pumpkin back home for the cows to eat. Yeah. So they loved it. They, they got a treat too. They did. Yeah. <laughs>If developing healthy lifestyle habits were as easy as putting on a milk mustache, there would be a lot less commotion about it. Unfortunately, when developing lifestyle habits, many people opt for an all or nothing approach, such as avoiding all sugars and refusing refined foods. Avoiding declarations may work for a while, but ultimately wear thin with an impending splurge of the avoided foods on the horizon. A less precarious approach is focusing on adding foods instead of subtracting. With an adding attitude, you feel less deprived and more likely to follow through. Dairy foods offer a convenient way to add nutrition like protein, calcium, vitamin D, and iodine. You can pour a glass of milk, open a container of yogurt, add shredded cheese, or spoon up some cottage cheese in just a few seconds. The Dietary Guidelines for Americans recommend at least three servings of dairy per day, but like exercise, many people are at zero. To add a serving of dairy, pick the easiest part of your day to make the addition, such as a yogurt snack in the afternoon or a slice of cheese before dinner to help stave off pre-dinner munching. You can use the addition tip for just about any health habit you want to reinforce, such as adding fruits, vegetables, exercise, or boosting water intake. It's just about as easy as adding a milk mustache. Coming up, we're back at Art of the Table with owner Dustin Ronspies to cook up some ricotta stuffed ravioli. Back in Seattle at Art of the Table, a small restaurant that offers bold flavors and a diverse menu that changes daily. Because of small size, it affords itself to be able to like really be attentive to each plate. That's the kind of experience I really value. I asked Chef Dustin how he's different from most chefs. I don't even make the menu until about noon the day the day of. So I'd make the menu while I'm driving to work right. in my head. This is this and is fresh. Yeah, it's <laughs> this it's, is new. Um, what are we gonna make today? Today um, we are going to make some house made ricotta. Okay. We're gonna make those into a ravioli. I'm there. I hope you are. <laughs> yeah, and I'm, I'm not gonna, gonna be, leave. I'm gonna put you to work. <laughs> I love it. All right. Our first step is to combine a half gallon of fresh milk with some bay leaves. Then we gather some peppercorn, crushed red pepper, fennel seed, and coriander, wrap them up in a cheesecloth, and place it in the milk. Cool. We finish it off with a little salt and place it on the stove over medium heat until it reaches 195 degrees. 
And I want you to start adding the lemon juice slowly. 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 And what we're looking for is just for this to start. Huh? We're looking for a mess. I'm just kidding. Okay. <laughs> well, you came you to the right place with me. <laughs> <laughs> Once we start to see the curdles, we set it off to the side and let it sit. After five minutes, we're ready to strain the mixture through a cheesecloth. Slowly drips and drips and drips, and what you have left is your fresh ricotta. Awesome. Pull out your bay leaves, so cool, pull out your yeah. sachet. You're good to go. We let the ricotta cool, and then we're ready to start making the raviolis. Okay, so we are going to make a filling for uh, some beautiful ravioli uh, and using this is the ricotta. Our... So this is a ricotta. Wow. It's been uh, uh, strained, cooled. Look at that texture. Uh, yeah, it's kind That's of crumbly. Awesome. It's got yeah. a, little, a little moisture to it, um, a little creaminess to it. Uh huh. We put two cups of the ricotta cheese into a bowl. Then we add some Parmesan cheese, a couple of eggs, and an egg yolk flour, and some black pepper. Once it's all mixed together, we set it to the side. So we're gonna make pasta? So now we're gonna make pasta. I've actually made a little bit of pasta. Okay. We'll roll it out we'll and we'll make it. some raviolis with Fun. it. As Chef Dustin was flattening out the pasta, I asked him why Washington's dairy is so extraordinary. I've been traveled a lot of the world and I've seen a lot of things and I just think that the, the people that we get our food from put a lot of love and care into, into raising their animals or growing their vegetables. And, and uh, as much love as we like to put into to, to producing good food from it. Once we have all of our dough rolled out, we are ready to start stuffing them. I find a, an ice cream scoop is the perfect... Uh, kind it's of a little mini ice cream scoop Yeah, though, a little right? mini ice cream. Yeah. I'm just going to lay these right down the middle. A um, couple with, inches apart? Yeah, with a decent amount. Of, yeah, you want a little space to be able to you know, crimp, mm -hmm. crimp your, uh, your rav raviolis together. After all of the filling is scooped into the pasta, I help by brushing an egg wash around the filling. Got those yeah, on. I think so. Right, so I what hope. We're gonna do now is like we'll just really gently fold that over. Next, we push the pasta down around the filling. After we have shaped all of the raviolis, we cut them. Then we place them in a pot of boiling water and cook for two minutes. And now we're ready to plate them. Finished product here. Awesome. Um, and you're putting them on a bed of? A bed of loveliness. We got um, some uh, wild morel mushrooms. Nice. Uh, some asparagus, a little spring onion. Beautiful little rashes on Those look on beautiful. So, Let's dig in. Help yourself. Okay. Mmm. That's amazing. The ricotta nice. in there is so tasty and creamy. It tastes amazing with these vegetables. Mm. Thank you so much. For it's my pleasure. Pleasure to, so fun. to have you guys here. To get the recipe for Art of the Table's ricotta stuffed ravioli, head on over to wagrone.com. You know, nothing says summer like ice cream. But you know what? Frozen yogurt came around and has given ice cream a run for its money. But what's better? Let's go around to the people of Spokane and see what they think. You like ice cream? Yes. I really like salted caramel. I'm kind of simple, I just like chocolate. Pistachio almond. Ooh, that's nice. Jamocha almond fudge. Any favorite toppings you enjoy on ice cream? Chocolate chip cookie dough. Some hot fudge, maybe. Okay. Caramel topping, whipped cream, chopped nuts. That's what I'm talking if about. If you're gonna do ice cream, do it right. Right? <laughs> That's awesome. Life's too short for bad ice cream. What about <laughs> frozen yogurt? Love it. You love it. What about yeah, you? Same. I don't have frozen yogurt very often. I'm not a huge fan. Have you had frozen yogurt much? Oh, yeah. Give me the ice cream. Give me the ice cream. <laughs> what do you love it so much? Toppings. Yeah, the the different flavors. Would you rather have one over the other? If it's just the ice cream and just the yogurt, then I'd go with the ice cream. Okay. But if you add the toppings, then I'd go with the yogurt. Okay. So toppings play a big part into yeah. what you prefer. I have some vanilla ice cream okay. and some vanilla frozen yogurt. But I'm not going to tell you which is which. Okay. okay. I want you to try these and tell me if you can guess which is which and tell me what you think you like better, okay? All right. Take a spoon. Give it a little taste. Kind of buttery. Tastes like vanilla ice cream. <laughs> okay, well that's, that's a good thing. Now you guys are gonna pick up row B. It looks like this is the yogurt. Is it different than the one you had before? Yeah, that one's less sweet. That was less like. sweet. Now why did you say it looks like that would be the yogurt? The way it's melting, you see the, the ridges in there. We, we, we ice cream experts call those, no, I don't know. <laughs> so we just need some toppings for that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then we'd be all right. Yeah. <laughs> Hazelnut and whipped cream on the top. An Americano with steak cream. An Irish mug. Chocolate, espresso, and 
Milk, of course. A cup of coffee is what gets a lot of people out of bed, and it's actually a great start to your morning thanks to the nutrition dairy provides. We spoke with the Director of Nutrition and Wellness at the Washington State Dairy Council, Martha Marino, to see what exactly makes milk so good for you. We are at Victor's Celtic Coffee, and this is a regular spot for you, right? It is. <laughs> I've been here for 20 years. Oh this my is, gosh. This is my place this and my kids' place. place, too. So you're the Director of Nutrition and Wellness. So what does that mean exactly? Well, I'm a registered dietitian, and so I get to talk to people about all the health benefits of dairy, milk, yogurt, yes. cheese, which is wonderful. I really enjoy my job. We have our lattes with us. Yes, today. we do. I know. We're cheers. At, <laughs> cheers. I know. I love a good latte, but by drinking this, we're getting some pretty good milk, right? You and I have grandes. And so we have, in a 16-ounce grande, 13 ounces of milk, which is really healthy. And a little kick from the and, caffeine. <laughs> which we can use this morning, right? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. A latte is actually a really good beverage for older teens and young people, adults, and then even older people as well, because it's such a good source of milk. And most people don't get enough milk. Um, the dietary guidelines recommend two servings from the dairy group, milk, yogurt, cheese. Yeah. And in a latte, you get even more than one serving of dairy. And it's fun, it's delicious yeah. too. What is it about milk that makes us healthy? Oh, you bet, very nutritious. It has a lot of protein, which is great. Calcium, as we know, mm -hmm. potassium, and vitamin D. So those are all very important stuff. Yeah, it, they really are. Is there a certain time of day that we should be drinking milk and having dairy products? I know we're having our latte in the morning, but should you, you know, spread it out throughout the day? Actually, yes, that's a good question. Um, milk is a really good source of protein, and what we know now is it's important to balance protein throughout the day. So having a good source of protein right now in the morning is really good for our bodies. Well, thank you, Martha, and here's to a healthy body with our lattes. You bet. I love it. <laughs> now, Val's just north of Bellingham at Grace Harbor Farms to see how yogurt is made. Grace Harbor produces milk and dairy products that are on store shelves all across Washington. I met with president and second generation farmer David Lukens to see how it all happens. We started this little funny hobby farm. We we're in Drayton Harbor up in Blaine area. And uh, fast forward about, you know, what has it been, 17 years now. And it's turned into a, a living for me and a bunch of employees. And it's, it's really cool. That's amazing. It, it really is. Uh, how about we go check it out? I would love to. All right, let's go. <laughs> well, right. come on in. All right. We'll wash our hands up and uh, okay. tour around. So what's going on over here? Well, what we got going on is we have a 66 gallon pasteurizer right now that's cooking milk. Oh, okay. Um, the temperature is right there on the readout. Once it reaches the proper temperature to make yogurt out of, which we're shooting for 180, 185 degrees, uh -huh. we're gonna bring it back down, get it to 110 degrees and we'll put yogurt culture in it. Oh, okay. That's what's happening over here. So once it's cultured, mm -hmm. it still is milk consistency. Mm -hmm. The culture will grow in the milk overnight. Comes out like this. Still looks like milk. Oh, yeah. Right? Yeah. Oh, it's, yeah, still warm. Still warm? Yeah. You got it. So the next step oh. in yogurt and cultured product land. All right, got a little heat going on here, right? You got it. So it's about 103 <laughs> degrees, 104 oh, degrees okay. the holding temperature in here. Okay. So the interesting thing about cultured products, yogurt, kefir, buttermilk, you actually kill all the bad bacteria with the pasteurization. You add good bacteria, and then you give it the per perfect environment for the good bacteria to grow. To keep doing right. its thing. So where are we now besides the refrigerator? That's right. <laughs> so what happens in here, this is our cool down cooler. Uh-huh. So after the yogurt will incubate overnight and set up into what we know as yogurt, mm -hmm. it comes out the next morning, we roll it into here. As soon as it's under 45 degrees, we can legally sell it so it could go on a truck if we need to go do a quick delivery or whatever happens. Uh-huh. So from the time the milk gets here until the time it's ready to get from the stores, no more than three days. Oh yeah, usually it's about 24 hours. Wow, that's amazing. And now it's time to give some of Grace Harper's products a little taste test. So plain yogurt, we're gonna start here. Mm. Oh, that's lovely. Mm -hmm. Ooh, I like that. 
Yep. So some of the kefir stuff, right? Mm -hmm. Um, it's similar taste to yogurt. Mm -hmm. This is vanilla, so you're just gonna taste the vanilla in there. Okay. Cane sugar and cultures. Has a different texture. Almost. Oh my gosh, it's like a milkshake. Mm -hmm. Not the traditional buttermilk. It actually tastes very similar to plain yogurt. All right, cheers. What do you think? Oh my gosh, that is so much better than what my granddad used to imbibe. <laughs> this Ch is our reward, right? Chocolate milk. All right. You got it. <laughs> Oh, nom! Mm. Yeah, Great. We call that the grand grandchildren special. They helped uh, mm. formulate the recipe. Oh, that's nice. You can't get much better than that. That's a real treat. It's like really drinking good. a candy bar. Literally. <laughs> yep. You got it. <laughs> well, David, thank you. Absolutely. This has been wonderful, delicious, and nutritious. Yeah, it's been a pleasure. <laughs>
Now it's time to assemble. First, we spread our filling on top of the base. It looks so much more complicated than it is. So that's what's nice too, because then you get a lot of yeah. credit for the pretty minimal work. Yes, I looks, like that. It looks really fancy, absolutely. <laughs> and we follow it up with the whipped cream. So and then I'm just really gonna good. cut the tiniest, tiniest hole in the corner okay. of our little bag of chocolate glaze. And then I'm just gonna run this all the way Fun. up and down. And I like to take a toothpick mm -hmm. and then just drag it down Fun. one side. Awesome. And then back up the other. Looks great. Isn't that pretty? Look at how beautiful that is. This is definitely one of those, like if you ever want to go to a potluck. This is what you want to show up with, and right? And win the prize <laughs> for best dish. It's right here. Okay, and now we're just going to refrigerate it for like 10 minutes. And okay. Just let our chocolate harden up and Dang, then we're ready. I thought we were going to be able to eat it. <laughs> okay. And now we eat. Oh my gosh, it looks so decadent. There's one for you. Thank you so much. You're welcome. One for me. I've loved all the layers of it so far, so I can't. So it's only going to be good when it's all together. Mm. <laughs> it's Can you so taste the vanilla? soft and sweet. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's really soft. Fluffy. Mm -hmm. It's fluffy. It's, it's just mm -hmm. absolutely delicious. Such a fun idea too. Thank you. <laughs> I'm glad to share it with mm. you. To get the recipe for Kristen's eclair cake, head to wagrown.com. So many family farms and herds of these ladies help make dairy one of the top commodities in our state. That's it for this episode of Washington Grown. Thanks for watching.